Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Natalie Smith, and I am Manager of Business Training Services here at Points of Light Institute. I am very excited to welcome you to our session today, which is titled, The Corporate Engagement Award of Excellence, Tips for Creating a Successful Application. Just a few logistics before we get started today. To minimize noise on the call, please use your phone's mute button. If you're on a cell phone or BlackBerry, there's often a mute button located directly on the phone or in the menu. Please do not place this call on hold or we will be able to hear your whole music. Please feel free to share your questions, ideas, and comments. And you may use the chat feature to submit questions at any time or use the raise hand icon and we will take you off mute so that you may ask your question aloud. Please note that we typically take questions at the end of our session but feel free to chat your question throughout the presentation, and we will answer it either during the session or at the end. If you're using a headset and you would like to ask a question, please make sure to unmute your headset. Or if you're joining us via your computer, make sure your computer audio is unmuted when you ask your question. If you do send your question via chat, a member of our staff will post the question to the speaker on your behalf. Please note that you can chat with all participants or privately with individuals. If you're joining by phone, please make sure to enter your audio pin in order to be heard. Note that the session will be recorded and we will make the PowerPoint and the, power, uh, the, the recording available after today's session. Right now, I'm pleased to introduce our presenter today, which is Melanie Stevenson, Senior Marketing Manager here at Points of Light Institute. I'm going to turn us over to Melanie to kick off our session. Great. Thank you, Natalie. And welcome, everybody. We're excited to be able to present our first webinar for tips on creating a successful application for the Corporate Awards Program. This is one of our favorite and most exciting programs, and we're glad to see such a wonderful turnout today. Um, the goal of our presentation today is to try to equip you with as much information as you can. Um, today we'll have some dialogue, but also too on our website we have tools and resources for you to go back and double check with um, if you have any questions with regards to what we've covered today. And then as Natalie had mentioned, we will also post this particular webinar on our website for you to go back and, and have a reference to to see how we've answered questions and things and stuff like that. So what I'm going to try to do is to get through the majority of the presentation in the first 20 or 25 minutes and leave room for questions um, and all of the answers that we can provide you. As Natalie had mentioned, we'd like to try to reserve questions towards the end, but if there's a question that you have in between that you absolutely need to know right then and there, we'll try to address it as best we can. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, today's agenda will cover a little bit of background on the Award of Excellence, eligibility, the selection process and the selection committee, the award criteria and our resources, and then again we're going to jump right into preparing a successful application and then open it up for questions. All right, for oh, points of light, the background is overall we try to inspire, equip, and mobilize people to take action that change the world. This comes in corporate entities, nonprofit entities, individual entities, and today particularly we're speaking with regards to the Corporate Engagement Awards of Excellence, um, which was created in 1993 to recognize companies of all sizes and industries that excel in meeting the principles of excellence for workplace volunteering. Um, they're designed to honor a company's overall employee and retiree volunteer efforts that highlight and keep in line the strategic vision, organizational policies and practices, and community service programs that support your EVP. Last year, the uh, Corporate Engagement Award of Excellence Ceremony was held during our National Conference on Volunteering and Service, which it is traditionally. Um, it was in New York City. And our honorees last year was AT&T, Campbell Soup Company, Intel Corporation, and Old National Bank. This year, our conference is going to be in New Orleans. Very exciting. Um, the ceremony is going to be on June 7th, and it's going to be at the uh, New Orleans Convention Center. All right, let's jump right into eligibility. I think most of you may know this, but 
Uh, the award is given only to publicly or privately owned or held for-profit business companies that are registered in the United States. Um, applications must be submitted by the parent corporate entity. Um, subsidiaries or any subdivision that roll up to that corporate entity may not apply. However, if the volunteer program resides in that area or within that sub subsidiary, that's fine. Uh, CEO or your chairperson for the corporation is required to accept the award in person on the ceremony on June 7th. And uh, award winners must wait five years prior to reapplying for the Corporate Engagement Award of Excellence. Selection process. We have two tiers of uh, committees. We have 12 members that serve on the Tier 1 Selection Committee and nine members that serve on the Final Selection Committee, and both have rotating terms. The representatives include corporate, nonprofit, government, academic, and media communities as well as prior year winners also serve on the selection committee. The names this year of the selection committee will be posted online. February 25th is our target date. Um, and this is the first for us, so we're really excited to announce the selection committee judges that will be participating. Um, their actual process is they all, each and every one of them, review all of the applications individually and rate them. And then they're rolled up to the tier, uh, the final judging selection committee, who also reviews them independently. And then we meet in one final day for a long session and review and discuss and look at the merits of each of the individual company's application. Points of Light does not participate in the selection process. We are the more the administrators, and we actually coordinate the overall process. But uh, it is the judge's responsibility to select and review and um, identify who the final honorees are. Timing. Applications were posted as of this morning. Very exciting. Um, and you'll see we actually have a new online application process, which is a little bit different than last year. Um, today is our webinar. Tomorrow, hopefully, if, if not by Friday, the webinar will be posted <clears throat> on the app on the uh, website for you to come back and review. The deadline for applications this year is March 25th. June 7th is the luncheon in New Orleans. And we implemented this for the first time last year, and it was very, very successful. So we are going to continue again this year and offer feedback sessions for those candidates that didn't make it to the final honoree selection. Okay. Resources and award criteria. This is just, I wanted to put in here a snapshot of our screen, of our home page on the pointsoflight.org website where you'll have all of the information, your resources, and this is your place to come back to if you have any more questions. It's also on this site where you'll have the webinar that's posted. You'll see down at the bottom, it just gives a further detail of the application that you can actually sign on with, the award criteria, the webinar will be posted, the selection committee, and then also you have opportunity to review the videos, photos, and a paragraph on last year's winners for 2010. This just primarily gives you the actual website as far as where that is. Part of the resources on there are the principles of excellence for workplace volunteering, which is actually the document that the criteria is used for the reviewing and the selection of the honorees the online application, last year's winners. We will be posting a Q&A next week. Um, wanted to also take into consideration some of the feedback and the thoughts that came out of today's webinar to make sure that we had all questions and answers on the website. Uh, we will also have contacts for assistance and then the recorded video webinar. This year we have a new online application process. You will be required to register and establish a password and a user ID number. Um, with this access, you'll be, as long as you have access to a web or internet access, you can go online and fill in your application. You can save it, come back, open it back up, save it, come back, um, until you're ready to finalize it and submit it for us. Um, all support materials are required to be uploaded electronically. And then this year, we have a limit of five support materials that can be submitted. Okay. 
Melanie, we do have one question that just came in. The question was that a hard copy of the application can be downloaded prior to submitting the application so that they could just have a hard copy to work on. Yes. You will see on the application on the lower left-hand side, there's a little button. After you've registered and logged on, there's a printer-friendly version. You can go ahead and download that printer-friendly, as I spit it out here, version. Um, and at the very end, you can save your application complete as a PDF, um, or you can download, or you could print out that application for yourself as, as well. Okay, let's move forward into preparing the successful application. General tips, and these general tips apply to how you approach all of the questions throughout the application. Um, the Corporate Engagement Award Excellence. The application has been designed to capture information on your EV programs that will provide us with insight at all program levels. If you think of your application as a business plan that takes the reader through your mission, goals, strategy, execution, and results, this is kind of the approach, the thought process you should have when answering these questions. And so if you can clearly align that to your strategic mission throughout each aspect of your program, that would be Great. Um, review the entire application before you begin writing. Um, you actually, as the question came in before, you can download, you can print it out. You don't have to type in in order to proceed to the end of the pages. When you log on, just cl keep clicking next, and you can keep going to the next pages and read. So read in its entirety all that we're looking for on the application so you can start formulating your story. Stay focused and really be clear with what the question is asking. Many of the questions we have sometimes may sound a little bit redundant, but they are asked for a specific reason. So if you are not clear with regards to the difference between two questions and they seem the same as you, go ahead and give us a call. We'll be more than happy to clarify the point of difference between those two questions. Map out your story before you begin writing. Kind of after you've gone through the full application, Think about, okay, what's the best flow to tell my story and how am I like, what are my best examples that I'm going to use? To be clear and succinct is the most effective uh, application for us to read. Answer all of your questions with program goals, objectives in, the, in, your, in mind and be succinct and to the point. Um, always secure a second and neutral pair of eyes to review or proof the final application. Many companies do this with regards to just having their marketing team or a communications team um, or just another pair of eyes of a person that is not that familiar with the program so that when they read it, it they'll come back to you and say, yeah, I get it. So if I will think about them being the judges who don't have any knowledge or any uh, specific um, information about your industry or program, you should be able to explain it from start to finish in order to give them the best picture for your program. Use examples to support your claims as best as possible. Statistical numbers, factual numbers, we're not necessarily looking for huge leaps and bounds, but we want to see inroads or growth to the goals and objectives you set out. Are you meeting what you said you were going to do? Um, as well as, when answering the question, represent the challenge the action, and the result. You know, if you have a situation where you have a manufacturing plant and people cannot leave, that's a unique challenge. How do you address that situation to be part of your EVP program and then show the results of it? So those are the kinds of things where it can be an easy takeaway when you think about those three specific bullets when writing your answer. Your final application should have a natural flow and tell the story of your program. And when demonstrating examples of your program, identify one that best represents your holistic view. We had lots of questions last year um, where people were a little bit confused and they threw all of the different programs that they had in there. And after talking through with them, they realized, wow, you know, we could have just shown this one program because this is just an example but a good representation of how we've extracted our mission 
and applied it through a department or through a specific day activity on a national level or on individual specific programs. Choose the program or programs when we talk about in the application your top three achievements that best represent the holistic view of your methodology. Okay, so now we're just going to be a little bit more specific to the actual application. Part one, which is your company and employee volunteer program information. This is your statistical overview of the representation of your overall program. Providing for us a clear understanding of the percentages of participation, investment, staffing, formal incentives, give us a concrete impression of the commitment to your program. Don't get concerned about having to compare a small company, which you may be, to a large company. We don't look at those total numbers that way. We look at the percentage. So each company, a large company, could have a smaller percentage of employee participation than a smaller company. A smaller company could have 80% participation versus 60 or 70 with a larger company. So we look at it in percentages, um, and which is the, the most fair way to represent it. The other part of it is we want to be able to just understand through all of those different boxes that you have the opportunity to check off how well ingrained your EVP program is with the company's day-to-day -day business goals. We have a lot of information in the application that we ask, do you have, do you have, and we want to be able to, to laundry list everything we think most people have some of or not all. We don't expect all programs to be checked off because <laughs> that's a lot of programs to have, and you would be running the program if all of those programs <laughs> would be checked off. But what we do want to see is the ones that you do have and the percentages of participation, we can kind of see how well it's working for your company. Um, and then when you get to the program specifics on this part of the application, this is where you kind of get the inroads of beginning to tell the story of your bigger picture program. Be sure to include the scope of that program as well as the participation level and your success. Okay, part two which is actually the essay portion of your program or application. Under part two, this is where the principles of excellence of workplace volunteering really comes into, into play. And we have added these two questions in there last year up front, particularly what is your employee vo volunteer program description as well as your company mission. And here's why we look at both. When we look at your employee volunteer program, we look at what your overall strategy is to the program, why you created it, and what the goals and objectives are for that program that you'd like to achieve. Then we ask what your company mission is. And this is actually your corporate mission statement. It's not your corporate philanthropy mission statement or your HR statement with regards to volunteering. It's the bigger picture of what is your company's mission. And then we see how the alignment is of how the, your employee volunteer program is set up to follow and support your overall company mission. So this kind of sets the tone. And then when we get to the other parts, once we start getting into the acknowledge, the commit, and the target, each, through each of those three categories, should really all roll back up into the, these two key mission statements that, that just really support what you've said you're going to do, how it supports the company mission. Okay, points of light, here's, here's the game plan. Here's how it works. Okay, so within part two, the first of the three key criteria is acknowledge. Acknowledge is really that you have identified that the workplace employee volunteer program is definitely to contribute to the achievement of its overall company's business goals. So we want you to demonstrate how your program is part of this strategic commitment, demonstrate how it's supported by senior management, as well as how the program is integral and an integral part of your internal communications and external communications plan. 
This means, is your volunteer program's goals and objectives written down on paper in alignment with your strategic company's goals? Senior management support, how involved are they? At what level are they involved? And what kind of involvement is this? Um, we've had questions in the past where we've had a lot of um, senior representatives that have been uh, shown on applications with regards to board participation. And that definitely is acceptable and it is a, um, a volunteer activity. However, we also really want to see them get their feet wet. We want to see some feet on the streets with the employees. We want to see how is it that they motivate and incent. You know, they are role models within your company as well. What do they like put the, the, the talk where the walk is or the walk where the talk is? I just said that reverse. <laughs> this is the acknowledgement. The acknowledgement is just not a thought bubble on the top of your head, but it is in writing to say we're definitely committed to this. Now we're committed. What do we do? What measures have we put in place to make sure that the program is successful? Have we set it up for a win-win situation? So that said, we have this great game plan story. How do we motivate the employees? How do we incent them to participate? Are we tracking the measurement of the employee volunteer program? And based on that tracking, are we successful, and if we need to, to shift a little bit, how are the evaluations in those tracking measurements directing us otherwise? You know, so, you know, sometimes the journey isn't always a straight path. You have to kind of go a little bit to the left, which is great, but the fact that you went to the left and we realized that we need to have to relook at it, you know, those are the kinds of things that we're looking at. The other part is, does your volunteer program have relevancy to the employee's work-life culture and is it a natural fit? Um, in a fun way, I can say it's not always going to be a golf tournament for your senior level people. <laughs> That's kind of what we're really saying here is, you know, what's the environmental scan of your employees? What are their true interests? And how do their true interests align with what the company's overall employee volunteer mission and goal is? You know, if it's to be able to educate people in the communities and the employees are in line with that, how accessible is it for the employees to do that? Do they have the flexibility to do it in their own communities? Um, does it fit well with their work uh, timings and schedules? And you know, is it just a nice blend for the whole family along with the company? Those are the kinds of things that we look for. Uh, target. One of the overarching issues and uh, objectives that we have with Points of Light and just in general the overall volunteer mission is we as individuals are really, really responsible for making changes in our communities and in our life. And right where we live and work and play are critical social issues that are happening in our community. We want to see within this target um, aspect, how do you identify issues that align with your company but are also within your community? Um, and how, how demonstrate how these are identified and how you determine what the working relationship will be with you. Um, do you have evaluation procedures in place to identify the community needs? How do you gather feedback? How are you working with that community partner um, to make change? You know, the results in those types of things, and this is a really good third party endorsement for your application, is if you're partnering to be able to put um, meals in kids' backpacks so they get to eat on the weekend, <clears throat> you know, how did that collaboration happen with the schools in your community? And then how do you measure that? You know, will you be able to come back and say, we, we were able to, to give kids lunches to take home for the weekend, you know, over a period of a year, we fed 500 people or, or those types of things. You know, it's more outside of the company, but what are the results and the issues that you would use to identify 
communities and partners, and your partners are your best friends there. So those are the ones that can help you to write letters of reference and those types of things as well. So that um, covers the entire application. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about support materials. Um, the role of a support material is to provide example of or reinforce what has already been stated in your application. Um, the support materials should not introduce a new concept or any other thought process that's not mentioned in the application. Um, we don't, the reason we have limited the support material this year to five documents is that sometimes it got to be a bit overwhelming for the judges. And sometimes they got through all the materials and sometimes they didn't. Um, nine, being straightforward and honest, the judges would get to the materials if they read through in your document and said, well, we have this great online interactive process so that we could communicate with our global partners as well as our domestic partners. And they're like, hmm, that's interesting. Let me go see what it looks like. You know, and then that instance is when most of the judges, <coughs> excuse me, would go and look at your support materials. So also, too, by limiting it, we're increasing the chances of them looking at all of your support materials. Um, so that's kind of where we've left it. If you all, always, if you have questions, feel free to give us a call here and we can clarify what would help best to support and demonstrate and show. But it should just be more of a visual extension of what you've already strategically written down on paper. So now there's questions. And I purposely did this quickly so that we can open up um, the floor for questions. I see my teammates over here are nodding their heads that we may have quite a few. <laughs> we do have a few questions here. Um, Let's see, the first, uh, it looks like someone has already tried to actually uh, download the application or access it, but was unable to. So we will work internally with our tech team to identify any issues that might be going on. And when I send out the recording and PowerPoint, I'll make sure to include the link to the website with a note that you know everything is OK. I, some folks may not be having issues, but if you are, you can feel free to send us a note about it. But just no rule follow up internally about that. What was the access? Just not the web page is not showing. Right. Page okay. Not found is what the note was that they got. Okay. Yeah. We did get that message note this morning. We thought it was just internal, but the our tech team is actually working on that now. So hopefully it should be done by the end of today. Okay. Um, the next question is: We are a not for profit finance financial institution. Does does that that, that allow that, that does a lot of volunteer work, excuse me, are we eligible for this award? Yeah, we ran into this. This, this is a big discussion. And um, the team here today inherited the program from the Washington team. And in their rules and regulations, it, it stipulates for profit only. Um, so unfortunately, these would be for profit business corporations registered within the United States. Okay. Then the next question is, in the targeting criteria, it seems there's a preference for skills-based volunteerism. Is that correct? No. Um, the target area specifically is to be able to identify the issue or um, the critical need within your community. So it doesn't necessarily have to be through skill-based volunteering. It could be going and packing lunches. It could be tutoring. It could be really anything. Whatever the needs that are identified. Now, the, the needs could be identified as a skill-based requirement. But there are plenty of other areas, you know, run-down recreational centers that are outdoors and playgrounds and cleaning up things and stuff like that to have a better community, improve the better community visually, and that type of a thing. So no, it, it does not have to be skill-based. Okay. The next question is, is there a size limitation to upload video as one of your support materials, or does video count as support material to be submitted separately? Video would be considered one of your support materials, and we do have at the end of the application where you browse and upload your documents, we do have the requirements for video attached at the very end of the actual application. 
The next question is, where can we locate past winners for this award? The last year's winners are on the uh, website. So you can click down there and see the 2010. We have transferred the old website to the new website, and we're in the process of updating that. But I will promise you that, at a minimum, we'll have the names of all the honorees by next week posted on the website. Great. OK, with supplemental letters of recommendation, nomination, and or materials such as video testimonials from employees be accepted or ideal? Ideal for? For support. I'm, I'm assuming for support um, materials of the application. So with those letters of recommendation, um, nomination, would those also help to enhance or support their, their form? Yeah, I think so. I mean, not not knowing your program, but if, um, you know, if part of, the, I was speaking hypothetically, if one of your employee volunteer programs includes, you know, educating and uplifting the education level within your communities, and you had an employee testimonial to say, I can raise my hand and say, you know, my son or my niece or my neighbor's daughter is now blah, 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 as a result of this program, then yes, that's results oriented. Or if you had a referral from or a recommendation letter from actually one of your partner nonprofit organizations that you work with in the community and say, that says, without the help of this XYZ company, we would not have been able to meet our objective, which is this. You know, so yes, those kinds of things are absolutely support. Anything that you think that would reinforce or show results to what you have shown in your application? Good question. Uh, I believe there was mention that a past award winners must wait five years before applying again. Is this correct, and are there any other rules or regulations for past award winners? No, Pat, you're correct. So that means you can apply year six. And no, there's no other requirements. And I kind of seeing your thought bubble is that no, we will not hold you to higher standards um, because you were a winner in the past. Um, however, think innovatively, think growth, and think uh, uh, new ways of doing what you've done in the past. Great. Another question, if we are applying for the first time, can we talk about programs and activities over the last several years? Or do we have to stick to 2010 activities? Here's what I would say. When we look at numbers and statistics and programs, we want to look at 2010. But what I would do is show how 2010 has grown from over the past year. So when you're demonstrating an example of a program we started in 2005, 2005, and now here we are in 2011, and we have in total gone or increased our program by 80% or 70%. OK. Another question that came in, um, just want to clarify again the type of businesses that are eligible. Not-for-profit not for organizations are not eligible. Is that correct? Correct. We, yes, we kind of clarified that with the whole team here. There was question last year, and we didn't have all of the documentation, but that was a, a unanimous decision this year. Um, however, we are looking at other options for nonprofit this year. Great. It seems past winners are very large businesses compared to me here in the Midwest. Is there a quantity versus quality consideration in selection? Quantity meaning size versus quality. Uh, no, large and small. And that was one of the things I was hoping to be clear with is if we look at the percentage of a penetration of involvement within your company, and you, we only measure you against your own goals and objectives. We do not measure you against any other company's goals or objectives or size. In fact, last year, we had, you, you'll see when you go to the website, AT&T was one of the winners, which is a huge mega, mega company. 
And then we had a small organization named Old National Bank that only operates in three states and has, um, was one of the smallest companies that is one of our honorees this year. So they were a very small company and they were one of the top five, uh, four honorees last year. Great. Okay, and I think our nonprofits are very curious about their eligibility as well. So if, you, if you're a quasi-for-profit um, versus government company, is there any consideration there or, or will there be a separate category for those folks to come under? I would say the best thing is to give us a call so that we can fully understand what your company's criteria is. Um, you know, at this year we did put the stake in the ground to say that it was U.S. for-profit companies. Um, but, you know, if, there, if you do think that there are some parts of your organization or things that would qualify, just give us a call and we'll talk, we'll talk it through with you. That sounds great. Um, I haven't seen any additional questions come in. Uh, folks, feel free to continue chatting your uh, questions into us. And uh, I think we have maybe just a little bit more information to share, but if you do have some additional questions, feel free to continue chatting those in. But I will turn it back over to you, Melanie, for now. Okay. Um, some other things that have come to mind, which I know uh, we have seen also when clarifying the, this particular award that we have for the Corporate Engagement of Excellence Award, is the difference between philanthropic efforts and actual volunteer efforts. We measure the actual volunteer program, the activities, the efforts that your employees do to get involved in the community and do things like that. But we don't take into consideration contributions or large donations or things that have been given that fall more, on, fall, fall more under your philanthropic um, mission or goal. Now that said, some of those things do go hand in hand. You know, so if a, uh, if a volunteer for some organization commits to 40 hours a year to an organization, then the company sometimes may give that nonprofit organization a $500 contribution. So the volunteer hours are tied with financial, and that's fine. We just don't look at um, specifically only contributions that are standalone as part of the evaluation in the overall program. Um, some other things that came to mind um, that we also had had people had had questions on is, and it's kind of a take on the quantity versus quality, is we're always looking for quality effort, but quality is defined by your levels of measurement. And so when creating and mapping out your story, be clear and succinct, and identify really just the two to three key programs that represent your employee program method and vision in its, its the best way. Um, sometimes in some of the applications, we've gotten a lot of, um, just a lot, a lot of stuff, and it was hard for the judges to get through it to see that clear thread or the clear line through the whole um, application process. Any more questions? We did receive another um, question, and this is just a, a, another technical question. Someone tried to uh, register and got an error message. So just a reminder, we will take a look internally on our, uh, with our technology team about any issues you guys might be having, but feel free to send us an email, but no, we will follow up internally as well. Yeah, this is our first time with the online application, and we've tested it and run it internally here. So um, pardon it for the glitches, but it's definitely something that will get fixed within the next, by the end of today or tomorrow. I think it's, it's some of the different firewalls and where it's hosted, so this is what we just have to make sure that it's accessible for everybody. Okie okay, doke. Well, I think that that pretty much covers everything. Um, at the last page, you'll see that we're here to help and support um, and that we're available to assist you throughout the entire application process. Um, again, my name is Melanie Stevenson. Uh, Jordan Yarbrough is also here in the meeting room with us, who is also 
Um, she and I are pretty stitched at the hip with regards to the corporate engagement program, so she can always help you, as well as Natalie, who is in our business member team, um, who was so gracious enough to have the webinar for us today, is always one to, um, to be able to help you as well. And again, keep the note that your application deadline is March 25th, um, 1159 Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much, Melanie, and thanks everyone for attending today. Just a reminder that we will make the recording and PowerPoint available after today's session. Uh, additionally, as you exit, you will receive a survey from us, so please take a moment and complete that and let us know how we're doing. And also stay tuned for our 2011 webinar training calendar. We have some exciting topics planned, and we'd love to have you join us there. So thank you so much, and please enjoy the rest of your day.